This is Weights and Wealth, your one-stop shop for entertaining education on building a stronger body and bank account. We are not doctors or financial advisors, and must warn you, this is not medical or investing advice. It is for your entertainment. Welcome back to another episode of Weights and Wealth. Today, we are going to be hitting the Faith F. Um, so our shout out is JC from Nazareth. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) You, you may see that Nick and I are wearing our matching mustard seed faith and catch up with Jesus Mm t-shirts. So very special, uh, faith 5F episode here. It is. Thanks for the gift, Ted. I appreciate it. Of course. Um, so the wealth wisdom of the week is that Dave likes to say that once you are financially secure, you are to live and give like no one else. And I kind of like this because I think that you should spend your money on quality things, um, which includes charity and then also just having a good life, not on overly material things, but living well. As far as the giving part of that goes, uh, we'll be touching on a book that we read. Uh, it's called Toxic Charity by Robert Lupton, I think. But we'll be touching on that in an upcoming interview that we do. Um, but it's a very interesting book if you're looking at how to make sure that the uh, money you're giving to charity is actually going towards a good cause, uh, especially from a biblical view. So. Mm. All right, and this week's intro article um, is from CNN, and the Supreme Court rejected a lawsuit that sought to hold Reddit accountable for child pornography on its site, Um, and it cited Section 230 of the Communications Decency Act, Um, and that's pretty much to leave big sites like Google and Twitter not liable for, I think it was originally for any terrorist content that was on there. Um, but I guess that they kind of extended it to, to Reddit now. And I mean, that's obviously an issue, but another issue I take is that Reddit censors a lot of what people say on there. Um, and I just kind of have an issue that they aren't censoring this as much as they're censoring ideas. Yeah. So section 230 is really tough one because it's basically something that was written for an out of date form of communication, right? So section 230, I believe was originally for uh, phones. It was basically so that the phone companies could not be held liable for what people were saying to each other over Mm -hmm. the phone. But Now that we have these social media and tech companies that are editing what people are saying by selecting which content people can see, um, they're kind of breaking some of the statutes of Section 230 because they're acting as editors. So then they should be held liable. If they are editing, they would lose their Section 230 claim. So basically, whenever you hear politicians talk about section 230 it they're missing a big part of it which is that section 230 probably shouldn't be applying to these companies there should be a different section section 231 you know (laughs) a more recent section yes (laughs) um and what and one of the things with this case is that the person who was suing it was her her boyfriend posted a bunch of sexual images about her onto reddit and she wasn't 18 yet and they reported the images multiple times but apparently it took reddit you know over a week to actually take them down yeah so i mean obviously no one thinks that that should happen i don't know how you get a company like reddit to act on that quicker because like a lot of these companies like facebook they don't have enough people to actually moderate the content 24 7 Mm -hmm. so they would have to rely on like ai and algorithms i guess to sweep against that kind of stuff i'm not sure 
if they have that kind of technology. I bet. I mean, they have to, you would think. I, I feel like it would exist. And also, if they're going to have that kind of content on their platform, like you can outright ban it. And that would be a lot easier to moderate mm-hmm. than trying to figure out who isn't 18 yet. Um, so that's another route that that they could go. Also, a company this large, they have. I mean, I haven't looked at their financial statements. I don't even know if Reddit if Reddit's public. Um, but if you are this large, you have to be able to prevent activity like that. I don't really think that saying we aren't able to or it's too expensive is a valid excuse. Yes. Yeah, so do you know what the outcome of this case is or was? Has it had a conclusion yet or? So um, I know a federal court held it and they said Reddit's not liable and the Supreme Court didn't even hear it. Like they said that they aren't going to hear it. Oh, okay. So they aren't even going to meet okay. and do anything. Wow. Okay. So. But these websites do censor so much conservative content that mm-hmm. it's strange that they do have the time and the algorithms for that, but mm-hmm. not for something like this. I think it's also, I mean, to Reddit's credit, I think a lot of the conservative stuff um, that gets taken down is heavily reported right from the get go <laughs> because Reddit's a very left leaning website. Uh huh. Um, but still, I think that they have an obligation to prevent illegal activity like that from occurring yeah. on their website. I mean, you would like, think that that kind of thing would get reported way more. But I guess if not a lot of um, people are looking at it, then it probably wouldn't get reported. Or the people looking at it don't even care. I, I, don't, I, don't, know. I don't know. All right. Should we move on to Proverbs? Yes. Um, so Ted and I each read the book of Proverbs and we chose our favorite verse from each chapter of the book and we're just going to go over it and kind of talk about them. Yep. So for those of you who are new to the Bible, uh, the Proverbs is in the Old Testament. So before Jesus, basically Old Testament, (laughs) before Jesus, New Testament, during and after Jesus, essentially. Mm -hmm. So, um, it was... It started to be compiled probably around 1000 BC, um, at least orally. And then I think most of it was written down by about 400 BC. So people, when they hear the word proverb, they might think of ancient Chinese proverbs. Those are very common in our society as sayings. And then also you may recognize if you read the book of Proverbs, you'll probably recognize a lot of common sayings that actually come from a lot of the verses in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a proverb is, is basically just a wise saying Mm -hmm. that has been around for a while. Yeah. And so Um, some of these have to do with uh, like faith and with God. And then some of them are just for uh, like wisdom for daily living. mm -hmm. And Ted and I both kind of noticed that the same proverbs are repeated multiple times between all the chapters Um, a lot about hard work and education, just things that are very important to your life. Yeah. Um, And it's also important to note that Ted and I have two different translations. So if you are listening and then reading your Bible, there might be some differences. Like I have the good news translation and you have King James or. No, I I uh, usually have King James right now. I've got English standard version is, uh, Alex gave me this Bible last year, so. Okay. I've been using this one and Alex and I did this first at a coffee shop and then I had Nick do the same. Mm-hmm. So I might throw in a few of Alex's favorite verses as well. Cause I've got those highlighted too. Okay. All right. Do you want to lead this off with a fun, fun little coffee shop date for anyone out there? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Cool. I'll start. Uh, mine for chapter one is let the wise hear and increase in learning and the one who understands obtain guidance to me um that rang true as like a white belt mentality and wise people are always trying to learn more so it's mm-hmm. the end of that dunning kruger effect curve mm. the one i got is verse 17 it does no good to spread a net when the bird you want to catch it is watching but people like that are setting a trap for themselves, a trap in which they will die. Um, and to me, that kind of means that 
you know, what, what was that Thomas Edison thing? Like, um, luck is when preparation. Or, oh, I don't know this one. Oh, keep going. I think it might be. Uh, I will look that up All and right. get back to you. It's like so, 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 something like success is when preparation and luck meet or An something along those lines. Prep, luck yeah. is prep, prep, preparation. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> luck is preparation and opportunity mixing or something like that yeah but yeah. basically be prepared like you have to be ready for an opportunity when it comes and not just try to seize it as soon as it comes along yeah that's good um also just from that i can tell that you and i have very different translations <laughs> what does yours say um from 17 yeah for in vain is a net spread in the sight of any bird, but these men lie in wait for their own blood. They set an ambush for their own lives. Interesting. So we've got we've got quite different translate. I've yeah. never heard of the good news translation before. No, no. Um, but I think there are like ten or twelve different versions. Yeah, that we got. All right, moving on. Uh, actually, I'll, I'll give Alex's for that first one. So mine was verse five and Alex had verse seven. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge. Fools despise wisdom and instruction. That was another common one that just repeated itself. Yeah, <laughs> that's throughout the whole book of Proverbs. Uh, moving on to number two, uh, chapter two, the value of wisdom. Alex and I had the same one. For the Lord gives wisdom. From his mouth come knowledge and understanding. He stores up sound wisdom for the upright. He is a shield to those who walk in integrity, guarding the paths of justice and watching over the way of his saints. That was verse six. six. What do you have, Nick? I actually have the one like right before that, yeah, like three to four. Okay. Yes, beg for knowledge, plead for insight. Look for it as hard as you would silver or some hidden treasure. So I I think that basically means that rather try to trace chase money, chase knowledge, and learn more. So wise. So wise. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost as if it's in the Bible. <laughs> this reminds me of the uh, episode we were recording earlier, which I'm not sure if it comes out after this, or mm. but we were talking about absolute and relative truths and how old ideas that have stood the test of time are what should be taught. And I think book of Proverbs is an excellent example of that. Mm. For chapter three, my favorite verse was, it's, this is actually a very well-known uh, verse from the book of Proverbs. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and do not lean on your own understanding. Have you heard that one before? Yeah. 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 All right. Mine was, Whenever you possibly can, do good to those who need it. What uh, what verse is that? I guess we should be saying yeah. what verse is that? That was are. verse twenty seven. All right. Yeah, I had um, I had verse five. All right, moving on. Number four, Nick. Do you want to lead us off? Sure. I have verse twenty three. Be careful how you think. Your life is shaped by your thoughts. So that's, I think we've talked about it before where your thoughts lead to actions, actions lead to habits and habits lead to your character. So it all kind of starts in your mind. Nice. Good takeaway. Mm -hmm. I had verse 19. The way of the wicked is like deep darkness. They do not know over what they stum stumble. Sorry. Um, so that's like, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Uh, mm -hmm. Kind of grabbed me as i was reading it um crossover from old testament to the new testament right there oh. but as you can see um nick and i have had all different verses so far so there's so much that you can pull from this even just from the book of proverbs here mm -hmm. that nick and i are going through and different verses will jump out at different people yeah and, and i mean especially on the first few chapters i was starring i probably had like six or seven things start and then I had to go back and kind of whittle it down and then by the end I was trying to be extremely selective with the ones that I was picking for the podcast yeah. <laughs> just because 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 each one is like oh yeah that's good oh yeah, yeah that's good I mean like I've got 
tons highlighted in here and I've also got notes written in between a bunch of the lines and some are underlined. So um, Nick and I are each just pulling one uh, just for the purpose of time for the podcast so that this isn't a four hour long podcast on the book of Proverbs. <laughs> um, but we're just trying to show people who maybe haven't really uh, been exposed to or maybe read the Bible that there's a lot of good wisdom in here. So uh, moving on to chapter five, um, I had, he dies for lack of discipline and because of his great folly, he is led astray. So discipline is important. That's another common theme in the book of Proverbs. Yeah. I mean, this, this whole chapter was all about adultery. I'm mm-hmm. not sure if yours. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I had like three to first three to five. Okay. The lips of another man's wife may be sweet as honey and her kisses smooth as the, as the olive oil. But when it is all over, she leaves you nothing but bitterness and pain. Um, and basically I think that's kind of saying that, you know, something might be super attractive in the moment, but afterwards you often regret something like that. Mm -hmm. You should have discipline. Discipline, yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on to number six. Um, I had verses 16 through 19. So Same. Oh, here we go. Uh, <laughs> the first one, we had the same. So um, I guess I'll read it from mine, and then we'll just move on to number seven after we talk about it. But um, this is four verses, and I'll just do it all in one go. So... There are six things that the Lord hates, seven that are an abomination to him. Haughty eyes, a lying tongue, and hands that shed innocent blood. A heart that devises wicked plans, feet that make haste to run to evil. A false witness who breathes out lies, and one who sows discord among brothers. Is that somewhat similar to what very similar <laughs> what yours yeah reads. yeah well, what was the first one again because i have a proud look haughty um, eyes haughty eyes yeah. yeah i mean like like it all pretty much means the same thing yeah but yeah all right moving on to number seven nick what you got i got verse 24 to 26 okay alex had that as well now then sons Listen to me. Pay attention to what I say. Do not let such a woman win your heart. Don't go wandering after her. She has been the ruin of many men and caused the death of too many to count. Yeah, so this chapter is also um, mainly about adultery. Mm. And I had earlier on in the chapter, verse 14, which uh, out of context isn't like a great verse. But uh, I'll explain it after I read it. So it says, I had to offer sacrifices, and today I have paid my vows. And this is the, uh, is it, it's either an adulteress or a prostitute, uh, an adulteress, I guess, mm-hmm. um, that is basically saying that um, she made her sacrifices for uh, like the sin that she made. And I thought that what this was saying is that people will often try to justify what they know is wrong. Mm. Um, And I think people do that a lot, but you're not supposed to do that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Um, If you do do something wrong, you're supposed to repent and ask for forgiveness. You're not supposed Mm. to try to justify it to make yourself feel better. Yeah. I know at at least as Catholics, we, we, we have confession and there's, a, like a lot that I've read about that if you do something knowing that you can just confess it later, that is, that's a sin in and of itself. Just mm-hmm. knowing that you're going to try to make up for doing something wrong in the present moment. Yeah. So, um, all right. On to eight. I had a couple for this one. Um, all right. I'll do uh, verse 10. Choose my instruction instead of silver. Choose knowledge rather th- rather than the finest gold. And that's kind of like one I said earlier, but mm-hmm. it's pretty much getting at how wisdom and knowledge are more important than money. Absolutely. Mine was number 13. The fear of the Lord is hatred of evil. Pride and arrogance and the way of evil and perverted speech I hate. So, um, 
with that, that's just things that uh, God does not like. <laughs> Pride and arrogance and evil and speaking wrongly. Um, so moving on to uh, number nine. Nick, what did you have for this one? So this one's on wisdom and stupidity is at least the the, the header in mine. Mm-hmm. Um, I have verse seven through nine. Okay. If you correct conceited people, you you will only be insulted. If you reprimand evil people, you will only get hurt. Never correct conceited people. They will hate you for it. But if you correct the wise, they, they will respect you. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I had right after that continuing uh, 9 through 10. Give instruction to a wise man and he will be still wiser. Teach a righteous man and he will increase in learning. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the Holy One is insight. So Nix was kind of about giving instruction or corrections to uh, basically a fool or an evil man and how that goes poorly. But when you do it to a wise man, he's willing to learn. Mm. Um, and then, or at least mine continued with, uh, with that part, uh, mm. with a wise man or a, or a good man, they will try to keep learning uh, and grow closer to God. And then uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. So, um, this is, I guess, kind of what we talked about with morality in a previous episode, how it's given to us by God, uh, Mm. same with knowledge. Mm. So, all right, number 10 or chapter 10, these are Solomon's Proverbs. Um, I had, uh, verse 12, hate stirs up trouble, but love forgives all offenses. And I think that just kind of emphasizes the, the importance of forgiveness. That's a really good one. Um, mine was a slack hand causes poverty, but the hand of the diligent makes rich. Mm. Uh, so there's a lot of these proverbs will talk about, um, how laziness will get you nowhere, uh, but hard work will make you successful. Mm. So again, like we talked about in the beginning before we started, this is some of these have to do more with God and with faith and some have to do more with character and then some have to do more with just, Uh, daily life and hard work Mm. all right chapter 11 i have verse 9 you can be ruined by by the talk of godless people but the wisdom of the righteous can save you um we've talked a lot before about how it is important to surround yourself with good people and that's essentially what i think this is saying that's a really good one i had a lot of good ones in number 11 i underlined the one that you just said Mm. um I'm going to give two for this one. Just, they're very different, but I like them both. So, uh, number 22, verse 22, like a gold ring in a pig's snout is a beautiful woman without discretion. So, this basically says that, um, like, if you, if a woman is dressing really, um, I don't want to say provocative. Provo- yeah, there we yeah. go. If a woman is very uh, provocative in the way that she displays herself to other people, it's like a gold ring in a pig's snout, right? It kind of devalues it. And um, some people might say, oh, that's so old fashioned. But I think it just points to how modesty is beautiful, mm-hmm. right? Um, yeah. I think people could learn a lot from that in today's culture. No, I mean, I like like we talked about before, how, how we would rank beautiful, cute, pretty hot. Mm-hmm. Beautiful is number one, I think. And I think that kind of implies some sort of modesty yeah. within it. Yeah. Um, and then like the, the old uh, saying, modest is hottest. <laughs> <laughs> modest is hottest. 24. Uh, one gives oh. freely, yet grows all the richer. Another withholds what he should give and only suffers want. And I think this gets at the root of what we've talked about before with uh, part of the, the fitness or the, the wealth portion of weights and wealth. Mm. Uh, I'm not sure if I said fitness, I meant fitness, finances. Finance. Um, yeah. So we talked before about tithing. And when you're setting up your budget, should set aside 10% for charity or tithing to your church or what have you. And what that does is, uh, first of all, it makes you better at spending your money and helps you create your budget and Mm. learn better habits with your money. Um, But the other thing that it does is I think it makes you want less because you know that you can't afford these frivolous wants because you have to give 10 percent to mm-hmm. the church or a charity so uh, i feel like it does make you live a more modest lifestyle and uh, want less because you know you can't afford it if you have to give 
ten percent on top of the astronomical taxes you're already paying. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> I actually had twenty four start as well. All right, so. there we go. Uh, for number twelve, I had number four. What did you have? Eighteen. Verse four. Uh, verse eighteen. All right. I'll start with verse four. Uh, An excellent wife is the crown of her husband, but she who brings shame is like rottenness in his bones. So I think that's, uh, that one just jumped out at me because I think that uh, like husbands are proud of their wives, you know? Um, Mm -hmm. I'm very proud to call Alex my wife, you know? I think she's um, one of the kindest people I've ever met and she's beautiful and um, yeah, I mean, to husbands, wives are like the crown, right? That's yeah. Uh, that's a lot of what the Bible teaches. Like the husband is the head and the wife is the crown. So mm. here it is once and it's th- throughout the rest of the Bible as well. Yep. Yeah, that's a good one. Um, 18 is thoughtless words can wound as deeply as any sword, but wisely spoken words can heal. And I think this gets at um, kind of choosing the appropriate um, verbiage for a situation. Um, I, th- I think the way that you select your words is v- very important, especially in um, kind of h- highly emotional situations. Um, and I kind of think that's what this verse is saying. I'm still learning to get better at, at that one. It's yeah, <laughs> it's, it's, a tough it, it's one. <laughs> it, it, yeah, it's hard, especially I think for us guys, like sometimes we don't even realize like the differences in tone. Mm. Uh, I think maybe I've used this example before, but compared it to like how. Uh, women see a lot more shades of color than men do because of the oh, rods and cones in their eyes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so they actually see more colors than we do and more shades. Mm. So I think it's the same way um, with how they hear tone. Mm. I think that they hear a lot of different tones uh, compared to us. It's like we hear a smaller s- amount or variety of tones uh, in a voice. Mm. So sometimes I might say something and I think I'm not saying it in any bad tone but then um maybe alex might think it's coming out a different way yeah (laughs) i mean i I think you kind of see the same thing with with emailing at work like oh yeah absolutely with the amount of exclamation points and just like the word flow like when at least when i'm emailing like i use like short sentences periods just trying to get like my point across Mm -hmm. um and then also on teams like when it seems i mean not not 100 percent, but women tend to use more like exclamation points and more I don't know, more, just more, just try to be Excited. nicer yeah, over yeah. text. <laughs> yeah. So I had a soldier that it was an issue. He sent an email and he sent it in all caps. Oh. Uh, and the person on the other receiving end of the email thought it was like an angry email mm-hmm. and did not want to work with him anymore. And we had to try to like reconcile and be like, hey. He wasn't angry. He yes. was just typing in all caps because sometimes he types in all caps and uh, we're trying to cross the cultural barrier uh, with, but it was, it was just a funny, yeah. funny no, issue at work. I know what you mean because I deal with that at work a lot because a lot of people type in all caps yeah. for our work papers yeah. and exactly, some people think yeah. they're being yelled at, it's, but it's just it's like... It's just them typing just, in all caps, yeah. 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 And the army does that a lot, uses all caps for a lot of things and... Okay. One soldier got mad at the other soldier, and it was just like, hey, let's just yeah. move on. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right, chapter 13. Which one did you have for this? I had 11. I had 11 star two. And Alex also had 11. Um, I had seven. Um, All right, you want to start? Sure. Some people pretend to be rich but have nothing. Others pretend to be poor but, but own a fortune. Um, I think this is this kind of goes back to I'm pretty sure the the millionaire next door was one of our books of the month. It was that might have been um, the first one. I think it was. Yeah. Where I mean, like just everyday people ha- can have a ton of wealth, but just not really show it. And then you also have influencers that will rent things for their pictures to put off this thing like mm-hmm. they're doing very well. Um, but when in reality, they're actually not. This verse to me meant uh, more. um in terms of like happiness and relationships mm. uh, than even like hidden wealth. Uh, I thought That's that another... by great wealth, it meant relationships and happiness and um, your relationship with God is what I thought it was getting at. Yeah. I mean, I'm, I, yeah, I mean, it could have it, it's I'm, both. Yeah. <laughs> His many F's as we can. Right. Um, but yeah, 11 is a good one too. So 11 is wealth gained hastily will dwindle, but whoever gathers little by little will increase it. 
we've talked about the statistics with lottery winners before. Mm-hmm. Um, apparently, they knew this a thousand years ago. Or, mm. No, three thousand years ago. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> and just with how like generational wealth, generational tends to kind of dissipate within a couple of generations. Um, chapter fourteen. Chapter fourteen. Um, I have 26 reverence for the Lord gives confidence and security to a man and his family. Um, I think this is believing in God and believing that God has a plan for your life. It just kind of makes you less, I guess, stressed about everything that's going on by believing that there is a plan. Um, and that things often happen for a reason. I think that just kind of, I don't know, just gives you confidence and then also like security. Mm hmm. I had number four, where there are no oxen, the manger is clean, but abundant crops come by the strength of the ox. Uh, And to me, uh, it takes work to reap the rewards in all areas. Uh, You can't expect to get things without working for them. Mm. (laughs) That's what that one meant to me, so. Okay, because I I mean, I, I guess mine reads a little differently. It says... Without any oxen to pull the plow, your barn will be empty, but with them, it will be full of grain. So I okay. kind of thought that was getting at use technology that you have, like work smarter, like you, you work smarter, <laughs> work smarter not, not harder. harder. <laughs> um, just use things that are at your disposal to make your work easier. Okay. Or uh, what is it? More hands make light work or whatever or, that one yeah. is. That would be the same application, I guess. Yeah. Moving on to 15. What did you have for that one? Um, All right. So I thought 13 was funny. I'm not sure what your translation says, but mine has when people are happy, they smile. But when they are sad, they look depressed. All right. So like (laughs) mine's similar. This was actually Alex's. It said uh, a glad heart makes a cheerful face, but by sorrow of heart, the spirit is crushed. So Mm. little different translation, but that was, that was Alex's. um, And I I do think that's a good one. when people are generally happy, I think you can see it in their face. Yeah. You yeah, can you see can. the eyes are the window to the soul, right? Like you, yeah. you can kind of tell when people are happy or not. So Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I I mean just just in talking with um a couple people about our podcast, like they they told me that they can tell when I'm really enjoying talking about a topic versus one that <laughs> We kind of just put together the micronutrient like episodes where your, your butt was hurting from the chair because we've been recording all day. Yeah, <laughs> Nick is not a happy camper in episodes oh. twenty two and twenty three. <laughs> if you want to go back and look, I was fine. It was episode eight. That was the one that I was in pain for. Uh, all right, mine was uh, the lips of the wise spread knowledge, not so the hearts of fools, um, and. The difference there uh, for the lips of the wise to the hearts of the fools, uh, when when the wise people talk, they're spreading knowledge. But uh, for me, this was talking about how when people talk just based off emotion and not based off knowledge, uh, it comes from the heart. It, that's fools will often just talk from about from emotion and from mm-hmm. the heart, and maybe not have any substance behind it. I thought that was just. Mm-hmm cool insight yeah yeah i mean i I feel like that's the case with a lot of um motivational speakers like hype men kind Mm -hmm. of they just kind of feed off emotion and without really adding any uh tangible value it's it's effective for public speaking for sure it is for oh yeah for for, i mean to keep people engaged and whatnot like you need kind of need to feed off their emotion because that's what people like yeah um all right chapter 16 i had verse two you may think Everything you do is right, but the Lord judges your motives. Um, and I think it's always important to have, you know, good intentions and good motives. And that's often how I I judge people, I would say. I'm not necessarily for their actions or what they think, but for where they're coming from. Because, you know, I can talk with somebody, especially with, with economics. A lot of people just want the greatest good for the most amount of people. Mm-hmm. Um, there are just different ways of going about it. And I might think their way is really stupid, but like, I won't hold that against them personally. Good job. Good job. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Mine was number 18. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Um, and be humble, you know, 
Mm-hmm. Don't be don't be full of pride. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh, I, I got an honorable mention for this one too. Okay. If you don't mind. Yeah. Uh, verse 31. Gray hair is a crown of glory. It is gained in a righteous life. Uh, and I thought, I mean, so for back then, if you made it super old age and had gray hair, um, it means you probably had a pretty successful life. A lot of people didn't live into super old age, right? But um, for me, it just speaks to like the wisdom of elderly people. And we've talked before, mm-hmm. uh, especially in episodes where we've talked about how the, <clears throat> how the changing age of a population affects the economy. Uh, we've talked mm-hmm. about how in America and in Western societies, sometimes today, elderly people are just kind of pushed aside and they don't live in the home with the family anymore um, mm. and how much of a shame that can be. Mm. So. All right. 17. 17. I have, I have two that I want to talk about for this one. So I got 10. An intelligent person learns more, more from one rebuke than a fool learns from being beaten a hundred times. And I've kind of heard this put another way that you only have to ask a stupid question once, as long as you listen to the answer. <laughs> so, and I mean, it's better to go and ask that stupid question once than, re- than remain in ignorance. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's just learn from your mistakes, basically. Yeah. What was your, uh, what was your second one? Um, 27. Those who are sure, sure of themselves do not talk all the time. People who stay calm have real insight. Um, and I think this kind of goes with when you hear somebody who's really knowledgeable on a topic speak they almost sound like they're unsure of themselves sometimes because they know like the limitations of what they think. Whereas if you hear somebody talk who sounds very, very sure of what they think, they might not be the best person to listen to. And no. Yeah. I, I had this one underlined as well. Um, it wasn't mine, but I'll just hit on it as well. Whoever restrains his words has knowledge and he who has a cool spirit is a man of understanding. Even a fool who keeps silent is considered wise. When he closes his lips, he is deemed intelligent. And it's basically just about, um, like, I mean, you know, you know when there's someone that doesn't talk a lot and then they talk, you listen to them. Right. right? Because they probably have something to say. And that's what this is really hitting on, uh, to me at least, is mm. that people who are just talking all the time, like us, who are just always talking on a podcast, <laughs> like, we probably don't know what we're talking about, right? <laughs> Um, but I think there's definitely something to that because especially like in the army for leadership, if there's someone who, uh, doesn't just talk just to hear themselves talk, you know, uh, they only talk when they have like a really good idea and they have really valuable insight. You listen to that person every Mm -hmm. time. Yeah. Um, so it's just effective. So my, uh, for 17, Mm -hmm. I had verse 17, a friend loves at all times and a brother is born for adversity. Um, and this was just a really good verse about brotherhood to me. Mm. Um, and yeah, I don't know. I mean, I feel like you need your, your brothers when you're going through those tough times. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I had on, on 18, I had three starred and one is tw- 24 is very similar to that. Yep. For, that was one of Alex's that she highlighted as well. 24 for chapter 18. Mm. All right. Um, for 18, I'll go with, um, oh, I have 13 and so I'll do 13. Listen before you answer. If you don't, you are being stupid and insulting. Um, again, just choosing your words carefully and actually hearing what somebody has to say before responding and kind of, and not assuming what they're going to say, but rather listen to what they actually have to say. Mm -hmm. That's one of the reasons I really like doing This podcast, I feel like with the guests that we've selected so far, and then Mm -hmm. like also whenever I'm talking to you, we listen to each other when like when we talk before Mm -hmm. trying to get in our next right tidbit. Right, a lot of times when you're talking to people, they're just focused on what they're gonna say. Mm -hmm. I think that's what this verse kind of gets at: people trying to answer before they actually hear what you're saying. Right, Mm -hmm. like can be very frustrating because you know you can tell that they're not listening to you right and that they're they're just waiting they're just waiting to get their next comment (laughs) out (laughs) it's like come on dude yeah yeah and i mean like there like there are a lot of times that ted's talking and i have something to say but i know that he's gonna keep going and i never get to like add what i had to say in but yeah it was probably immaterial and then we end up going down a different discussion that happens Um, all the time and before we started the podcast like in 
prior years when I've been listening to other podcasts, I've been impressed with people like Joe Rogan mm-hmm. uh, or Sal on Mind Pump. I think Sal is an excellent interviewer. Uh, Patrick Bet David, how they're able to let someone finish a train of thought as they're talking and then follow up to that. Mm-hmm. But then a few minutes later, they ask a question that, I had while that person was talking and they were probably thinking that question while the person was talking, but instead of like butting in and giving their two cents, they waited for the person they were interviewing to finish what they were talking about, Mm. continued the conversation as it was going off of that. And then Mm. later wrapped back around to the question they had takes a lot of mental bandwidth, I think to be able to do that, but it does. But the, but the person that you're talking to also picks up on that and Mm -hmm. it makes them kind of feel heard absolutely, and that you're actually listening to what they have to say. And it just works in daily life. Like it makes you a much more likable person when you actually listen to people and then go off of what they have to say. Yeah. Come to Nick and I for relationship advice. Yes. Works well on dates. Yes. (laughs) (laughs) Active listening. (laughs) Uh, For, 18, my verse was number two, a fool takes no pleasure in understanding, but only in expressing his opinion. So another verse literally talking about the same thing, right? So um, we may as well have had the same verse for for that one. Yeah. Moving on to 19, what did you have? Um, I had 27. My child, when, when you stop learning, you will soon neglect what you already know. So just keep on learning. All right. I had multiple for this one, but I'll go with 14. House and wealth are inherited from fathers, but a prudent wife is from the Lord. I really like that one, Um, especially with when Alex and I were doing this uh, activity. It was probably two or three weeks before our wedding. Mm. That one just hit me in the feels. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, And then I'll do my my other one because I had two highlighted. I really like this other one as well, but... Verse 21 is, many are the plans in the mind of a man, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will stand. And to me, this was a big one because I always have a lot of ideas. I think Nick and I are both kind of wired that way. We're, we're always chasing our many ideas, whether it's barks and brews or weights and wealth or anything else we're going down the rabbit hole on. But uh, mm. you can have all these plans, but at the end of the day, uh, whatever God's plan is for you is what you have to follow. Mm. Um, and I think we've we've talked before about how uh, there's not a lot of silence in a lot of people's lives. And Mm. if you find time, whether it's in the morning at the beginning of your day or any other time, if you find time to have silent time and to sit down and pray, um, you might might learn a little bit about maybe what God's Mm. plans are for you. uh, Just having that conversation. Yeah, I mean, it just forces you to kind of be introspective and just kind of think about what's actually going on in your life rather than just having something constantly in your face to distract you. Yeah. For 20, I had verse 17. Yeah. No, I had 19. Okay. So. Well, I'll start then. Bread gained by deceit is sweet to a man, but afterward his mouth will be full of gravel. So, uh this is just whatever you gain, you should gain by honest means. Uh otherwise, it it's not going to be good. It's not mm-hmm. going to be pleasurable or uh might come back to to bite you later yeah kind of always looking over your shoulder if you like kind of wrong somebody to get wealthy yeah all right 19 is a gossip can never keep a secret stay away from such people who talk too much gossip is something that really really bothers me (laughs) just hearing people gossip because i mean i know that they're they're probably going to be talking about me that way yeah um and we we had this experience in college we had a friend yeah that was big into like the drama and the gossip and it was just so like annoying when Mm. you would hear that person talk about other people in the friend group and you're like okay well if they're talking about this person that way they're talking about all of the us that right. way to other people too i know i you know what i'm talking about yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. and like i and like you know you can't go to that person and tell them something in private because they're gonna be gossiping about it yeah. later on <laughs> <laughs> yeah and like that kind of stuff just like i feel like i have pretty high energy levels i don't really sleep as much as a lot of people and i have a large motor i can just kind of go but 
emotional drama like that oh, is yeah. what will drain me. Like, no, so I just don't here. like being around that kind of stuff. It's just annoying. So yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you there. All right, twenty one. I had verse twenty two. All right, I had nineteen. So I'll start off. It is better to live in a desert land than with a quarrelsome and fretful woman. 22 is a shrewd general can take a city defended by strong men and destroy the walls they they relied on. So I think that this kind of gets into, again, that, you know, wisdom is, I mean, in my opinion, more important than, you know, just brute strength. Yeah. Even though I like having brute strength. (laughs) And mine just kind of gets into how uh, it's better to live in a desert than with a quarrelsome wound. <laughs> mm. So, so some of these are, are funny. Mm. Um, but moving on to 22, I had verse 6, train up a child in the way he should go. Even when he is old, he will not depart from it. I think this is like a big problem we have in society today that um, people, a lot of people aren't raised well and mm. you see it later in their life you know uh, you can mm. just kind of that's why like when if you ever meet really good kids it's like really nice to go up to the parents and say hey like your kids are awesome they're so mm. respectful so polite like they're a joy to be around alex and i came across a family on our honeymoon and we told the mom like hey your kids are awesome they were so like respectful and like just a joy to be around for the day that we were around them and like the mom said that is like giving a bonus to like a mom as like her salary. Like that's like giving oh, us her salary. Yeah. Like that's, that's our form of payment. Like hearing that <laughs> from, from other people. So, um, yeah. If yeah. You, uh, if you ever come across really good kids, make sure you mm-hmm. tell the parents they're doing a good job. Yeah. And I mean, I, I, I feel like a lot of parents won't, you know, discipline their kids because they feel, you know, either mean or it's hard to do. Mm-hmm. But if you really love your kids, you're going to, show them like the correct way to live things they should and shouldn't be doing yeah there's the whole trend of not saying no to your kids as a parenting style that's going around right now is that a thing yes (laughs) so bad oh my gosh (laughs) just don't give your kid any guide rails children (laughs) children know just as much as you do it's ridiculous yeah i mean Um, there are a lot of things about kids in there like that like basically like discipline your kids and I don't know. It's just kind of mind blowing to me that people are not going to say no to their kids. Yeah, that's a crazy one. Um, What'd you have for twenty two? Verse twenty four. Don't make friends with people who have hot, violent tempers. You might learn their habits and not be able to change. So this is just another one about the people that you surround yourself with. Yep. You're an average of the five people you surround yourself with, right? We've Mm -hmm. talked about that before on the show. Yep. For chapter twenty three, I had verse nineteen. I did too. Oh, here we go. Hear my son and be wise and direct your heart in the way. You, uh, you want to go off of that? I mean, I'll, I'll go for 20. Don't associate with people who drink too much wine or, or stuff themselves with food. Drunkards and gluttons will be reduced to poverty. If all you do is eat and sleep, you will soon be wearing rags. So just live your life intentionally. Yeah. Like have, yeah, don't just go through all willy-nilly, self-pleasure, whatnot. Very good. Uh, and just, yeah, be intentional, right? 19 and 20 i guess Mm. talking about being intentional for chapter 24 i had verse 29 Mm. i had five all right you want to start yeah being wise is better than being strong yes knowledge is more important than strength after all you must make careful plans before you fight a battle and the more good advice you get the more likely you are to win that's a really good one i had that one underlined Mm. um but can't highlight them all, so. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and for 29, do not say, I will do to him as he has done to me. I will pay the man back for what he has done. So, it says, do not say that. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, pray for your enemies, right? Uh, mm. Don't be focused on revenge. Be focused on forgiveness. Yeah. I also have one more I want to add. All right. 26. All right. An honest answer is a sign of true friendship. And I think that's kind of, again, where, you know, telling your friends something that's hard that they don't want to hear, but because you think it's best for them to know, I think that is a sign that you truly care about somebody. And that's about your friends? Yeah. Because mine talks about kissing lips on that one. Oh, it does. <laughs> does it? 
<laughs> I mean, it, it's like that. a different translation, but whoever gives an honest answer kisses the lips. So I guess. Okay. Love. I don't know. I mean, I think but, back then kissing was more of like something you would do among friends, not just kiss the bros good night. Go. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, basically. All right. <laughs> All right number twenty five. I had verse 24. It is better to live in a corner of the housetop than in a house shared with a quarrelsome wife. Mm. So uh, I didn't just highlight this one to be funny, like the last one, right? Mm. Um, the big part of this one to me is actually where it says uh, in a house shared. And to me, that's, uh, this, that isn't just like putting this all on the wife. Um, that shows that you're a team when, uh, like, as a husband and a wife, and it's probably partially your responsibility as well. Um, if you're with a quarrelsome wife, that's why it says shared. I think there. So mm. okay, that was my take from that one. Yeah, I had. Wait, we're on twenty five. Ch- chapter yes, twenty five. Chapter right. twenty five. Verse twenty one is: If your if your enemies are hungry, feed them. If they are thirsty, give them a drink. And that's um, oh. And then 22 is you will make them burn with shame and the Lord will reward you. Um, and I think that's I think that's very true where if somebody's just being really rude to you and then you're just nothing but nice to them, it kind of a makes them embarrassed. And B, I think this also goes into turning the other cheek. Yeah, Alex, Alex highlighted that one. It's, it's definitely a good one. Mm. All right. Moving on to 20. That was 25. So 26. Um, I've got several here, so why don't you go first? I had verse five. All right. Give a silly answer to a silly question, and then no (laughs) one who asked it will will realize that he's not as smart as he thinks. Play stupid games, win stupid prizes. (laughs) There you go. Uh, I'm gonna. I love that one. Try to keep our clean. I really like that. That was a good one. (laughs) Talking about being a silly goose over there. Um, I'm gonna try to keep our clean rating, but that's the, the. F around and find out. Yeah. Curve right there. Right. So. Mm. Um, for mine, I guess I will go with. Uh, I'll go with 12. This is more about um, wisdom and always learning in the Dunning-Kruger curve. Do you see a man who is wise in his own eyes? There's more hope for a fool than for him. So. If you think you're wise, then uh, a fool has more hope than you do. Mm. there's always so much to learn you know and you have to really have that uh that growth mentality i think in life to Mm. to be successful yeah all right on the 27 yep i had verse 17 yep yeah (laughs) this is so this is a very very well known uh well known verse so this is proverbs chapter 27 verse 17 Mm. People learn from from one another just as iron sharpens iron. Yeah, my translation is iron sharpens iron and one man sharpens another. Um, Mm. And I don't think we really have to dive deep into that one too much. I think we can move on. I think people know the gist of that one. Yeah. For 28, I had verse 19. Okay. Whoever works his land will have plenty of bread, but he who follows worthless pursuits will have plenty of poverty. And Mm. to me... Uh, I like this one because I think it talks about actually doing something substantive with your life and with your work. A lot of people um, follow pursuits that I uh, don't want to plagiarize. I'm trying to reword it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> a lot of people uh, go into things that don't really have a real point and don't actually serve others mm-hmm. in any sort of capacity. Right? There's jobs mm-hmm. out there that don't really help anyone at all. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think as a Christian, uh, you're calling or whatever job you go into, whatever career you go into should uh, be to help others in some sort of way. So mm. different people have different skills, uh, obviously, but uh, I think that Christians should, should try to find something where they can help others. Yeah. I've, and then I think that kind of gets into like the hobbies that, that you choose as well. Yeah. Um, I mean, right now this is still just a hobby for us, yeah. but it's fun. And then you have hobbies like video games, like that is just kind of like a fruitless endeavor. Yep. Um, I had verse 13, you will never succeed in life. If you try to hide your sins, confess them and give them up, then God will show you mercy. Um, and that's basically, I think, you know, talking about 
the things that you've done wrong with somebody else does kind of make you feel better about them. It like lets you just like get it off your chest, mm -hmm. I guess. Um, yeah, don't let it fester. Yeah. Yeah. That was Alex's as well. It's a good one. I feel like you and Alex have had a lot of the, a lot of the same ones. Yeah. <laughs> All right. For chapter 29. Is that what we're on? Mm -hmm. Yeah. 29. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. right. What do you have? I had verse four. When the king is concerned with justice, the nation will be strong. But when he is only concerned with money, he will ruin his country. So this is not a new thing, I guess. I guess they still had it thousands and thousands of years ago where politicians were just concerned with getting rich. The tale as old as time. Yeah. Yeah. Mine was verse 11. A fool gives full vent to his spirit, but a wise man quietly holds it back. Um, and that's just having discipline, again, like we talked about earlier, um, and not giving into worldly things for pleasure but to be able to uh like restrain yourself basically um, okay as an adult you should have that capacity and as a christian it's really important you know we have a lot of uh rules that we try to follow as christians to uh live a life that god would be proud of right mm. so uh we want we obviously want to stick to a lot of uh the rules that uh christians have that we try to follow and you need a little bit of discipline to be able to do that. It's, it's hard, you know? Um, yeah. So. And well, mine, m mine for that specifically caught out anger, anger. It says stupid people express their, their anger openly. Um, and I think that kind of is like, you should sleep on it. You know, something like if you're upset about something, you should give it some time and like actually think about it rather than just have an immediate reaction. Mm -hmm. I think the people that are really susceptible to like emotional reactions, um, like, Sometimes it just seems like there's like an inverse correlation between like logical thinking and emotional thinking, mm -hmm. right? So I think that's what this talks about too. Um, and we've talked before about how uh, like Stoic philosophy seems to pull out of the Bible a lot mm -hmm. and almost like plagiarize it or paraphrase it. Mm -hmm. um, and like that's, I think that's one of like the big ways. Uh, one of the big things in Stoicism is being able to like control your emotions and not just reacting to mm -hmm. the emotions you have, but thinking about them um, and then reacting after you think about the emotion that you have. Mm -hmm. So I think your translation kind of goes over that with mm -hmm. not just reacting to anger right away. Yeah. All right. Chapter 30. Yep. What do you got? 30. I had verse 12. All right. Go ahead. All right. There are those who are clean in their own eyes, but are not washed of their filth. Uh, and that, for me, this just talks about you have to be able to uh, see your own sin. You know, no one's perfect. So if you can't see your own sins, um, you're not perfect. They're yeah. there. Um, and uh, in order to be washed of the filth, you have to ask for forgiveness for your sins, right? That's, this is a big into the Catholic. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> Um, blanking on the word confession, confession. sorry confession. Yeah, yeah confession um so mm. all right i i had uh verse 32 if you have ever been foolish enough to be arrogant and plan evil stop and think if you churn milk you get butter if you hit someone's nose it bleeds if you stir up anger you you get trouble so it's basically like your actions have consequences like mm -hmm. whatever you do there will be consequences um I think especially now there's like a lot of like, yeah, I can do what I want, but your actions will still have consequences. Like, like that's something that's not ever going to go away. Yeah. 31. The final one. <laughs> so this is a different um, author than like the previous ones we've been going through. Mm -hmm. So this is from King Lemuel. Lemuel. Uh, but Nick, what did you have for this one? I had verse 30. Charm is deceptive and beauty disappears, but a woman who honors the Lord should be praised. Um, just kind of like beauty fades over time. You should pick, you know, someone who, who you're going to spend the rest of your life with based on things larger than that. Mm -hmm. I had verses 10 through 31. Should I read them all? Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, oh, yeah. Yeah, so I'll just start with 10. Um, 
but it's an excellent wife who can find. She is far more precious than jewels. Um, so this goes back to what we were talking about earlier, how like the husband is the head and the wife is the crown in uh, biblical or in Christian teaching. Mm. Right. So um, and it just goes to show that like a lot, I feel like a lot of people think when they look at like the Bible or uh, like religions like Christianity or the other Abrahamic religions that um, like women are like suppressed and there's like misogyny and stuff, but it's like, no, we revere like mm. women that love the Lord and have tremendous character, right? Like mm. that's beautiful. Right. So um, I think it's the opposite of that. It's, it's not oh, yeah. misogynistic. Like we revere amazing women, uh, an excellent wife who can find, she's far more precious than jewels. Uh, and then the rest of uh, that 10 through 31 just goes on to talk about, um, a woman who loves God and um, how valuable she is, and mm-hmm. what what makes what, a woman that uh, that loves God. So, yeah, basically how involved she is with her family and like the things that she does for her family and traits that she has. Yeah, traits. so yeah, um, for all the women out there, that's uh, <laughs> that's one you can show your husbands, I guess. Uh, <laughs> chapter thirty one, verse ten through thirty one. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, I I enjoyed this. Um, yeah, so that was a fun one going through this. Uh, the Bible's fun, kids. Mm-hmm. Pick it up, read it, and yeah, <laughs> go I mean, through it with your the, friends. Yeah, it's, it's the number one selling book of all time, right? Yeah, and it's also our book, our, our book of the month. Oh, yes, <laughs> so. uh, Weights and Wealth Book Club, <laughs> book of the month for weights and for wealth this month mm-hmm. is the Bible. Nick and I have different versions here, uh, even I have different versions of the Bible that I pick up, right? I, go between King James and English standard version at the Bible study that I go to on Saturday mornings, Mm. different people have different Bibles, even though we all go to the same church. Right. So, um, the different translations are all relatively similar. Uh, some are more similar than others, but, uh, it doesn't matter which one you grab, just pick up a Bible and start reading. And if you're looking for some help on where to start, uh, DM us or reach out to us and we'll help you with that. Mm. Thanks for joining us today at Weights and Wealth. And don't forget to apply today's lessons to live healthy and wealthy. If this conversation will contribute to your fitness and financial gains, please share it with a friend or family member and give a five-star review so more people can lift bigger weights and get bigger bank accounts.